We are in the middle of, uh, oh, actually we are continuing the series. Uh, Charlotte kicked us off last week. If you still remember, we talked about the gifts of the cross. And there's a, there's a question that Charlotte asked last week, which I think is key to this series, when she said, if all that was required for our salvation was the death or the crucifixion, then why everything else? Why the path? Why the cross? Why, why everything else? You know, it, I went home last week and I actually sat and pondered a lot about that. Because it, it brought to mind 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Let me just read it. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse... Uh, I'm going to start from verse 23. It says, for I received from the Lord what, sorry, for I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after, after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, do this as often as you drink it in the remembrance of me. How, how, as people, how quickly we forget. For the people who were there at the time, this idea of saying, remember, remember, it would not have been so prominent because for them they had seen everything. Everything is there. They, they, they witnessed it. But even for them, over a period of time, things get lost. And God in this scripture is saying, remember. But in essence, he's not just saying, remember my death. He's saying, remember my death and all the gifts associated with my death. And today we're going to continue, as I said, with the series. And I'm going to be looking at two things. And that is the spit as well as the, the thorn of crowns. Sorry, the crown of thorns, sorry. Uh, let us go to Matthew chapter 27. We are going to start reading from verse 27. Matthew 27, start reading from verse 27. Okay. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters and they gathered the whole battalion before him and they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and put a reed in his right hand. Kneeling before him, they mocked him saying, Hey, king of the Jews, and they spit on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the rope and put, and put his own clothes on him and led him away to crucify him. Charlotte also went through just a summary of the story. Because if you remember, with the council, the Sanhedrin, one of the things that also happened was that they spat on him. With the one instance, it was an expression of anger. With this instance, it is an expression of humiliation. The soldiers knew that the spit was not going to kill him. It was not going to inflict any physical harm. But it was meant to humiliate him. It was meant to do that which physically cannot be seen. And that is break his spirit. Because... The soldiers did not really have to do this. Because it, 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 it is so interesting when you look at this whole story. How in Luke chapter 18, I'm not necessarily going to read it. In Luke chapter 18, Jesus foretells of exactly the same thing. He foretells that he's going to Jerusalem. He's going to be beaten. He's going to be arrested. They're going to spit on him. They're going to do all these kind of things. Yet he continues anyways. 
But here's, a, here's, a, here's, a, here's, a, here's another side of this story. If you go to John chapter 13, Jesus washes the disciples' feet. And they don't really understand what he's doing. And he says to them, what I'm doing now, you do not understand, but later you will. If you look at, uh, it's Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8, you find Jesus healing a blind man. If you start reading, I think from verse 23, if I'm not mistaken, you find Jesus healing a blind man. What does he use to heal the blind man? He uses spit. In the one instance, you find spit being used for humiliation and expression of, of, of anger. In the, one, in the other instance, you find the spit being used to open the eyes. He says, what, what I do now, you do not understand, but you will later. What you do not understand now about the spit, the fact that this is humiliation for me in the present, this is anger expressed for them in the present. But what I'm doing is I'm taking it upon myself so that for you, you can turn it around and use it to open, to, to open the eyes of the blind. Because the things that come our way, some of them come exactly like that. They're in ex- they, they are an expression of something whether it's anger or this or that. But Jesus is saying, I am the example for you in terms of how are you supposed to carry these things? Don't look at the spit as an act of humiliation, but look at the spit as an opportunity for someone to have a window as to who Christ is. Because if you look at it differently, There are many people who will never come to church. Even if you ask them, let's come to church. Tim was just sharing the story. There are many people who will never come to church. But the Bible is very clear. The message of the cross or of the gospel has to be preached. And how else will we be able to do that if we ourselves are not the message? So some people will not have this kind of word spoken to them, but they will have a window which is that word spoken to them in saying, Jesus took it all so that you don't have to carry it. If you look at the soldiers, continuing with the story, they take the crown of thorns. Charlotte explained this very clearly in in that they didn't just put it on him. They shoved it on his head. If you... Go to Genesis uh, chapter 3. Let's just quickly read that, that one. Genesis chapter 3. You start reading from verse... Um, start reading from verse 17. This is after the fall, when they've been discovered, and God is now speaking to them. He has already spoken to Eve, but now God is speaking to Adam. He says, And to Adam he said... Because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. The thorns were an expression of the curse that was pronounced by God on humankind. What the soldiers did not understand was that the scriptures had to be fulfilled because now the curse has been pronounced, but someone else has to carry that cross, take that cross on our behalf. So in essence, Jesus, with the crown of thorns, he was taking the, the curse upon him to say, this curse that has been pronounced here for you, my child, for you, As believers, it no longer applies to you. Because you stand on a different foundation, the foundation that says, Christ is all in all. Christ has paid it in full. This is a very simple message. The message of the cross or the message of the gifts of the cross. And as I said last week, just pondering on these gifts, 
One of the things that stood out for me was the fact that listening to a sermon alone will never bring the full understanding of what these gifts are all about. Listening to a sermon alone will never bring full understanding of the extent of the humiliation, the pain that Christ had to go through for our sake. Only when you sit down and then you begin to ponder your own individual salvation, you sit down, you take the time to look at where God has taken you from, to look at what God has done for you in your life presently. I look at my life. I mean, I remember there was a time when I was so broken, I prayed this prayer. I said, Lord, reveal me to me. Reveal you to me. Reveal me to me. Reveal you to me. Because at that point, I was at a point where I could not understand my behavior. I could not understand even how God related to my behavior. I was at a crossroad. Because I felt so far removed in terms of how I was living, but I also felt him not being involved in my life. And the the answer, without going to the whole story, the answer that I got from him was, all this time, you have been leading. Lay down your life and allow me to lead you. Lay down your life and allow me to lead you. Because what God, in essence, is saying I want to be in the place of you. If you look at the story of Barabbas, the unjust for the just. The people were shouting, release Barabbas. But in essence, they were confirming the salvation story in that the price has to be paid. The just has to die for the unjust. And with that, As you begin to sit and you ponder, one thing has to stand out. As Charlotte uh, uh, mentioned last week in saying, why? Ask yourself the question, why did it have to be so? Because not just looking at it from the context of just that, the death and the resurrection, as in an act that took place at a distant past, but looking at it from the context of where you are presently, what is currently happening in your life? And how does that relate to how Jesus lived, to how he carried it, to how he translated it or interpreted those actions? Because that's that's, that's the model that we have. Not our thoughts, not what we've seen, not what we've heard, but Jesus things come our way I have the peace in in understanding that the Bible says he has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness he has already given us all of those things because he has already carried all of those things for us Hebrews chapter 4 says let us then approach the throne of grace with boldness we approach the throne of grace with boldness not because of our deeds Someone once mentioned this to say that we are so deceived, especially when it comes to our deeds, because when I've done well, my hands are lifted high. I come running to the house of God. When I've done terribly, I'm at the back because I feel like I'm, I'm not in sync with God. Even if maybe, for example, someone can say, come and pray. You'll be like, no, 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 let someone else pray. But all of those things, as I said, take the time to ponder. Because God, in essence, is saying, that is not how I want you to live. I have taken your place so that you will live in my place. There's a story of the twins. These twins, one was living a, a just life, going to church, serving the Lord, and so on. The other one was out there in the world doing all sorts of things. And what happened was this other twin that was out there in the world killed someone. And they ran back to their house. The other one was sitting at at home. The other one came in, clothes bloodied and so on. And when he he came in, he he related the story. This is what I've, I've just done. 
Then the other twin said, my brother, take off your clothes. He didn't understand. He took off his clothes. Then he also took off his clothes. He gave him his clothes and he took the bloody clothes and wore them. When the police came, because they are identical twins, they assumed that this is the one. So he went off to jail and this one continued. Now the moral of the story there is that this other brother now is sitting and, and pondering this act. And the other one said, I have taken your, your punishment. I have taken over your life and, and the guilt and the consequences of, of how you lived. Live my life in my stead. That's Jesus. I have carried the shame. I have carried the curse. I have carried the humiliation. But be an expression of who I am. Don't look at life as you would have outside of my death and my resurrection. When things come your way, Jesus says, sorry, in 1 Corinthians 11, do this in remembrance of me. So it means someone is doing something very painful and, and, and difficult. Before you instinctively respond, just point at the cross. Just point at the cross and the death and the resurrection and what it means that you now have to face this person who is inflicting so much pain and so much harm because look at Jesus. He didn't do anything to any one of us. And he had to face humiliation from all of those people. He didn't deserve it, but he faced it anyways. And that's why standing here, we stand not because of our works, because of how qualified we are, but we stand because we are just surrendered. We stand because we fully understand that only in him are we made perfect. Only in him do we have hope for glory hope of eternal life so this morning church that's 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 my message a simple message in saying the gifts of the cross as we continue with this series the gifts of the cross are not so much about what we are saying here standing up here but it is so much about how much of christ do we remember in terms of the death and the resurrection how much of him are we willing to say we lay down our lives and we surrender to him. Let's pray. In Jesus' name, our King, you are honored, you are glorified forever. Words alone, O oh King, can never, can never be enough. That's why, Holy Spirit, everything pertaining to us, Lord, we lay down, trusting you to be our teacher. Not to walk out of here, Lord, with this sense of what the message was about, but this sense that says, Lord, you have spoken. Because you have spoken, we want to hear what you are saying. And because you have spoken, O King, it is life. In faith, Lord, we live our lives and help the Holy Spirit to continue to live that way. In Jesus' name, amen.